Welcome to the Activity Time Podcast, hosted by the SLE Marketing Team. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Activity Time. I'm Emilio. And I'm Macy. And we are the SLE Marketing Team. It's been a while since we've been together. Um, In our last episode, we had a fun trivia game night with the marketing team and decorated gingerbread houses together. So we have many new ideas coming up for this semester, and we are just excited to be back so that we can continue having fun in community. Today, we have two very special guests joining us today to talk about everything fitness and mental wellness. Um, So yeah, today we have Eduardo and we have Otto. Uh Uh-huh. And yeah, I would like you uh, to introduce yourselves. Um, I guess I'll go first. Uh, A lot of people just call me Eddie. Uh, I go to Cal State Fullerton. I'm as well a, a business marketing major and I'm 21 and I've been doing this for close to like two years now. Yeah, my name is Otto Gutierrez. I'm 35. I live over here in the city of La Mirada. Um, I had my first client in 2008, so it's been a while. Um, Certified personal trainer and also certified in nutrition consulting. Um, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Well, I don't even know where to begin here, but I cannot thank you both enough um, for all your support and just um, everything. I mean, this these past like six months, um, for those of you that don't know, Otto is actually a family friend of mine and I've really gotten to know him since September um, when I moved back home here in Los Angeles, California and definitely just being more involved with mental health my physical health has definitely given me a positive outlook on life and so i thank you both and i really look forward and we're happy to have you on today's podcast just to share a little bit more about your story and how you can basically give some good insight to students who don't have you know those resources for at-home gyms or just you know need a voice or ways to help motivate themselves as we're working during this remote period so I would love to hear a little bit more about your gym slash company called Stimulus Mindset. Um, Take us through a little bit of journey. What inspired you to create it and what it's known as today Um, and to how Eddie hopped on the team as well. Would love to hear that inspiring story. Yeah, so uh, like I said, I started in 2008. Uh, I used to compete in mixed martial arts and boxing. Um, I had a little home gym at my mom's house. It was just the garage, uh, punching bag, a little squat rack, a couple weights and stuff like that. And then um, one of my managers at work wanted me to help him lose weight. And I was like, yeah, you come come down, you know, we're throwing a little workout and so on and so forth and ended up becoming a client. And then word kind of started spreading. And to be honest with you, that's been my marketing since day one. I've really never really marketed myself or it's always been kind of word of mouth. Um, I'm a very um, kind of introverted dude. I think uh, my craft in life makes me be a little bit more extroverted. Mm. But um, yeah, and then after I moved into my home in 2006 and the first thing I built was a gym <laughs> before I even had furniture inside the house. And again, started off with the garage and then it just expanded pretty dramatically. Um, I don't know if you guys kind of want to take a little tour of it real quick, just to kind of show you, would this be a good time or do you want to? Um, we'll let's, save that for, let's save that for the end of the podcast. Yeah, I would love to hear a little bit more first. Um, yeah, and then, um, yeah, I met Eddie in roughly around 20. 20- 15-ish, I want to say. 2015, 2014-ish. That's when we first like met each other. I was 14 years old. Um, I think, fun fact, I'm a neighbor of his, so I live a couple houses down. And I think one day, me and my dad were walking and we saw Otto in his garage with a couple of clients. So uh, me and him, no, he, him and my dad started talking. So I think for at least two or three summers, I was uh, at the gym back then it was called the playground and you know just two or three summers just sort of doing a little bit of boxing uh, nothing much too and then for the next two years years, I sort of went MIA and just yeah I don't want to take it from here yeah so 
uh, not too long ago, we actually did another little podcast. It was pretty cool. And uh, a quote that I ended up writing down is like, uh, uh, help, help starts with others. Um, healing, healing starts with others. I'm sorry. So even if you're going through something kind of rough in life and, um, you know, you, you just, everything's kind of about you and your pain and your hurt and your suffering, go find someone else to help out, whether it's somebody on the street, uh, somebody that you know that's struggling with something, because it kind of takes that, that pain and suffering away from you and um, being able to help someone out just, yeah, again, just takes that away. Um, so I, I saw Eddie walking down the street and I would always, I'm that guy that kind of wants to save the world. Um, so, uh, sorry, I drew a blank. I, I saw Eddie walking down the street and I'm like, man, if, if I can't even help my neighbor, how am I supposed to help out all these people that I have in my mind? So I went up to him on the street and asked him if he wanted to go to lunch. Um, I had the motive of kind of digging in and seeing if he'd be willing to to come down and, and try to lose some weight. I think he was approaching like almost 400 pounds. Almost 400 pounds, yeah. At the time. So yeah, then we went to lunch and then from there, he ended up committing to a year. Um, the first year that he was here, he was here about six days a week. We didn't really focus on the most important thing that we focus on nowadays, which is our nutrition. Um, I think that's one of the biggest struggles, honestly, here in America. So the first year didn't really lose too much, but accomplished a lot. Um, you know, kid used to come into the gym and looking down at the ground, really not making eye contact with anybody. Um, you know, his posture straightened up. He got more confident, lost about 20 ish pounds, um, ended up getting a lot stronger, lifting a lot more weight, so on and so forth. Um, and then not until finally the following year, um, we both committed to getting up at 4.30 every morning, six days a week for the entire year. And that's when you drop like almost over 200 pounds. Um, I think I have a picture here of Eddie when we first started. And you can see it on our social, but that's that was him in the beginning of that year. And then obviously you see him now. Uh, yeah. Guys, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> pop off. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, so this is me now. Mm -hmm. Snaps. That's amazing. That is insane. Yeah, and then throughout that process, throughout that year, we ended up changing the whole. We wanted to do something just us. Um, and start something kind of fresh. And that's where stimulus kind of came about. And uh, the whole concept behind that is, you know, it's kind of more from a question, like, what are you stimulating? Um, and that is not just the physical, but also your mental and emotional. Um, a lot of people work out and get into the fitness because they're trying to cope with something, um, you know, angry, whether it's a mental thing, which it, it's all good and it all ties in together, but it goes way beyond the physical for us. So even with our slogan, it's think, feel, move. First, you have to think and then feel and move. For example, let's say, let's not even go to fitness. Let's say you're approaching, you're asking someone on a date. You're asking someone on a date. So you have that thought, you have the thought like, oh, should I ask them on a date? What if they say yes? What if they say no? Like, you know what? I'm going to ask them. So here's the thought. I'm going to go ask them on a date. And you start to feel, you start to feel the anxious, the nervousness, the excitement. So then that's now after you do that feel, after you have that feeling, here comes the movement. You walk towards the person, your vocal cords start to warm up. And then that's when you say, hey, do uh, you want to go on a date with me? And that's where our whole concept comes with think, feel, move. I mean, we apply it more here towards the gym, but it can be applied to life as well, you know? Of course. Um, I kind of have a question regarding like what you both were talking about. And I know you two are both big advocates of, of serving others. And, you know, being in this pandemic for almost about a year now, have you noticed kind of a change in behaviors in your, your clients and like just some of their goals and values and what they want to achieve or same thing for you both like um you know not just in fitness but like you know um i guess just uh their mindsets and and outlooks of life I'm, I'm curious to know if you can share some of that with us since a lot of our our listeners have been impacted by the pandemic and we've been trying to find other ways to fill in voids if that makes sense 
I'm not going to lie, man. For me, it's kind of hard. Uh, nothing has really changed. If anything, things got even a little better in 2020. Yeah. Um, like it reconnected you to clients or, or grown a relationship. That's what you yeah. Mean. Reason being, you know, I'm, I'm very blessed to be able to work out of my home. Um, and I've, I've had a lot of the same clientele for a long time. We've had a couple of new faces come in. You're one of them, Emilio. Um, so I've, I've had the pleasure of working with, with some new people as well. Um, but I mean, for me personally, like I keep saying it, it's been a, a huge blessing. Um, I'm a little bit of a hard ass. So I don't like the whole COVID stuff and, and all that. Um, I, I, I haven't hasn't really personally affected me um and and thank god that i haven't had any family members you know pass away or get dramatically or extremely sick um i want to say that almost all of my clients have had covid and, and survived it and it wasn't that 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 big of an issue um i i really do think that your health and your movement and everything that you do in life um, we're able to respond to diseases, sicknesses a lot better and stronger. Um, I, I do see a lot of fear. Um, if, if I were to, 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 to say anything about it, I, I see a lot more people hesitant, anxious, impulsive, very soon to respond out of fear. And, and again, I think that goes with the whole stimulus thing. Like, what are you stimulating? Um, is you have a stimulus and then the, the one choice that you do have is a response. And how you respond to that, that's the one that we try to focus on the most as well. Not only specifically, what is it that you're trying to target or what is the stimulus, whether it's coffee, whether it's water, whatever it is, but how do you respond to that? Um, I don't know how it's been for you because I know he's had a couple scares. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and too, Eddie, as a, as a college student, I mean, I know with you still going to school locally, but you were commuting and now being online um, and also working more like in the gym. How, how has that impacted you? Yeah, so I'm not going to lie. It was a bit of a hard transition in the beginning because at least for me, I'm more of like a visual learner. Like I have to be in person. So, but honestly, it's like, I felt like this within this quarantine, it just gave me more time to improve on myself and just, you know, just make me even a better person. Like I know everybody is suffering from quarantine. Like I've had a couple of family members who, uh, you know, luckily haven't passed away from COVID, but have had contracted COVID. And my, me, myself, I had a COVID scare, but turned out I had strep throat instead. And, um, you know, it's just, like Anna said, it's interesting, like how people are so like, quick to respond when you might think you have COVID. Like even me personally, like when I, when a couple of clients uh, told us that they had contracted COVID, it's just like that quick fear in my mind is like, wait, 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 wait. Okay, okay, okay. If they contracted COVID, what if I have COVID? What if, and just, I just go down this rabbit hole, rabbit hole, rabbit hole until I tell myself, wait, stop, wait a minute, okay. You're gonna be fine if you do contract it, because if you contract it either way, you're you, you're gonna have it and you're gonna live through it. Just because, I don't. Me personally, I feel like I have, you know, I'm in good health right now. The only person I would fear at most is maybe my mom or my grandfather contracting it. But at most, it's just like if you let that fear consume you so 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 much, you'll just think nothing but fear and just you'll be so terrified so you won't be able to live your life and that's what i see a lot of people doing during this pandemic they're letting their fear control them when you know they should a yes be aware there is a pandemic and be aware there is you know this virus but don't let this virus control you you know just that's my um thing mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe for some of your viewers, like we were saying, how you respond, um, take advantage of the opportunity. It's, I know things are going to start to open up and things are going to start moving again, getting really busy and people getting busy and just moving is, is even a huge coping mechanism nowadays. Everybody's just too busy, too busy, too busy. And that's because you don't really want to face what it is that you need to face. Um, I think the biggest thing that I saw happen when we became 
when we got into quarantine was that everybody's habitual patterns had to stop and everybody had to reestablish patterns what time you wake up what time you go to school what time you do this what time you do that and most of them that I saw from the outside kind of went to quick, easy, comfort. Um, and again, you know, we're very blessed and fortunate to have the facility that we have and, and the partnership that we have um, because 2020, I got to say, it was Eddie's probably best year of his life, man. Um, you know, the, the kid ended up, again, he kept losing weight, got a girlfriend, went on his first date. I ran um, the LA Marathon. Ran the LA Marathon. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, it's just more how you decide to respond to what it is that's going on and taking the opportunity to establish good habits. Um, it, it takes time. It takes a lot of repetition. And I know with all the information out there in the media, um, it's very fear-based. And, and again, we got to be safe and we got to be careful. Um, but my personal experience is all I really have. Right. So kind of adding on that note, um, can you tell me us a little bit more about the relationship between mindset and fitness? Yeah. Yeah. So I think like how Eddie was saying with the thing, feel, move, it starts with a thought. Mm-hmm. that that thought produces a feeling um which is an emotion and the definition of emotion it's like a e, e the e stands for energy and then motion so whatever energy it is that you possess inside that's the movement that you're going to produce um so if you're hopping on a squat rack or doing push-ups or whatever it is and you're you're doing the movement you're thinking like damn, I'm fat, I'm never going to lose weight, or I'm, I'm too weak, or, or this or that, where well, you're going to feel like that as you're doing what it is that you're doing, and you're going to produce that kind of quality of movement. Um, I think it's very hard nowadays to become present. Um, I, I always ask people to kind of focus on their breath and have their movements be in harmony with your breath. Um, your breath is is present. You're 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 literally there breathing. It's it's happening in that moment, and that's something that you can focus on. That that is present. Not laundry. Not dishes. Not the date you have later on. Not the project or this or that. Um, but give your undivided attention to what it is that you're doing in that moment. Um, multitasking really doesn't exist. I don't think you really get to give your undivided attention to what it is that's happening in that moment. Everything else will take care of itself as long as that moment's taken care of. So yeah, it definitely starts here and then that produces everything else. Um, Yeah. Thank you so much for giving us um, a better insight about the relationship between mindset and fitness. Um, And for our next question, I would like to understand what does mental wellness mean to you and what does it look like? Yeah, so it's it's super important, mental wellness, because if you're not good up in here, then you really can't perform anything outside, no matter how hard you want to try, no matter how, yeah, just no matter how hard you want to try, it all starts up in here. This is why our, our logo is the brain because everything connects to here. This is, you know, our major, uh, ah, what would you call it? This is our control center. And, um, you know, mental wellness definitely comes first before fitness, before, um, you know, nutrition, before anything, because once you get, you know, this settled in, once you feel good right here, then everything else will come in hand. Yeah, I think one question that I ask everybody is why? Why, 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 why? Um, You know, if you're trying to lose weight because you want to get a girlfriend, even though that is valid and it's strong, um, it it, it just might not be enough. Um, Things get really tough throughout this whole journey. And the reason why it is that you're doing what you're doing is the only thing that you're going to have when shit gets really, excuse me, when things get really tough um, and hard. So 
that that why is something that you need to go to sleep with you need to wake up with you carry it around everywhere it's the one thing that's going to stop you from grabbing the bag of chips to try to cope with some other kind of emotion you have purpose you have reason um ask yourself why and and that kind of ends up tying into how you perceive life and the world and what it is that you're striving to try to accomplish um yeah that's yeah. You bring up a good point, and I definitely have a question about that. I'm trying to, to formulate it here, though, in my head. Um, mm -hmm. Like when you're talking about like um, emotions triggering in our heads, and like making us quite like us like go to a bag of chips or something. Um, can you like elaborate a little bit more on that, if that makes sense? Like, um, where was I going with this? Um, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, I know no, we no, talked yeah. about it before, like how sometimes we view food as like an outlet for like therapy or some people go towards like drinking or just dr even drugs. And, and, and I know it's a huge issue right now during the pandemic with people working at home and students. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just so unfortunate with the rise of suicides. Of, it's, it's just absolutely horrible. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I just I would love to hear a little bit more about that. Yeah, I think like anxiety, depression, and all those things kind of stem from not facing what it is that is going on. And when you try to cope with an issue with something that is like synthetic or mm -hmm. um, it, it ends up becoming a habit. So habits are too weak to be noticed until they are too strong to be broken. When you go for that first bag of chips or that candy bar or whatever it is, and then you go to it again. It's it's very unconscious. You're just like, oh, I'll just uh, I'll just grab this, or I'll just I'll just take a drink here. And then before you know it, you're you're having a drink every single night. And all of a sudden, you created a habit. Um, we're very automated. Everything that you do becomes really automatic. The way you think, the way you feel, and the way that you move is normally from your unconscious mind. It's very rare that, again, we're conscious and we're present because you know, most of the time we're in la la land. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's the way your brain kind of works. It's kind of like a prediction machine. Um, think about it when you're in the car and you're driving and all of a sudden you get to a red light and you're like, how the heck did I get here? <laughs> like, I, I, I forgot the, the, like how I even got here because you were just so consumed in your mind. And your unconscious is always really taking care of you. It's, it's kind of where we live from. Like if you're walking down the street and you're focusing on your phone, your your unconscious is still letting you know there's a light pole here there's a car coming over here um and your unconscious just gets built over time over time throughout your experiences um and for anybody that that needs help out there i think the first line of defense that you have is a voice if you need help with something talk to somebody about it say something you know consult with someone the second line of defense that you have is your fight or flight. So if you yell and you're screaming because somebody's robbing you or something, all of a sudden blood and all kinds of chemicals go to your uh, extremities to try to either run or to fight. And then once those two are done, which is the one that I feel like a lot of people end up going to is paralyzation. You, you get paralyzed. And that's so your body thinks that you're you're kind of screwed and, and you need to conserve energy for your, your, your major organs. So now you don't have a voice, you can't fight or you can't run anymore. And now you're kind of screwed. You're, 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 you're kind of dead inside. And, and, and that's where I feel like now you get into depression and don't get it twisted. Like, I feel like we've all been depressed. We've all been sad, but then you deal with it, you cope with it, and then you move on. You don't stay in that place. Um, yeah, yeah, I think I hope that answered your question, kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. And another thing that I've kind of been um, trying to like picture is someone who's been struggling with this and trying to get to this point of like a great healthy balance with their mindset. And I kind of wanted to talk about that, like the maintenance that goes behind keeping a healthy mindset. Like what's the most challenging thing about it? Um, and what are some things that could be affecting our mental wellness that we just don't realize? I think the major, major one is 
what you consume through here, here, and here. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, now with social media being the way that it is, again, I'm 35. I, I was really late to Facebook and Instagram and all that stuff. Um, but I can see how it can consume life. And that ends up becoming another automatic kind of coping mechanism where, you know, anywhere that I go, I just, I see people waiting in line and everybody's on their phone. The first thing you do when you have a little bit of downtime, just pull out your phone and go straight to social media or whatever it is. And, and, and that, again, that kind of takes away from being present. Um, one of the things that I see the most with like physical fitness and stuff is that everything's immediate. You have an immediate response. Like when you lift something, you immediately feel how heavy it is, how light it is, and you have to face it right there. And then, um, and, and yeah, your, your number one is, is your sleep. <laughs> you, you need to get your sleep in, man. Like, you know, I know most of you guys are students and, you know, you have these projects and you end up staying up all night and getting ready to study for a test and this and that. Um, I would have you to read like it. It's what's happened to me and Eddie, <laughs> just yeah. how our moods are. And when I come in in the mornings, it's like, yeah, it really can affect us. With that. Oh, and I can definitely relate with you there. Just like there's been times where, I've had projects and homework and essays due where um, I just like, I didn't go to sleep till 1159, almost midnight. And just like, I had to wake up the next day at 430. And I can just feel how much cognitively I'm not there the next morning and how like, just like the difference, like how much night and day is when you get your actual like seven to eight hours of sleep compared to, you know, the college uh, four hours of sleep or less and just like yeah it just all starts stands right here because when you don't have enough energy to you know go out through the day you don't have enough energy for this and you just sort of zombie along and just like you're just like from one class to another and you're just like you're not really comprehending you're just doing the motions and you know like Otto said sleep is super super important not just you know for recovery and for you know mental wellness too but just to like yeah, I guess sleep is recovery. It's our body's way of recovering and just being like, okay, it's time for us to shut down and fix everything that needs to be fixed. Yeah. I know you're Macy talking about maintenance and the things that we can't notice, but your your water intake. You don't know how many people I that's like one of my first questions, like how much water did you drink yesterday? And it's like, oh, I I actually didn't have very much <laughs> you know and it's like dude water <laughs> water water yeah, water, water, have water like three cups of coffee or something <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah exactly so i think your hydration is is very very crucial you can go literally a month without food as long as you're hydrated you have water i think after three days of no water and you're dead <laughs> um so that that's the second one and then the other one i don't even want to say food how about we, we we go more to the micro level and think vitamins and minerals, which is your micronutrients. Obviously, your macronutrients are your proteins, your fats, your carbs, and, and alcohol. Um, and they all have uh, a caloric value. But your micronutrients, your vitamins and minerals with today's diet, I see everything really lacking in, 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 in those nutrients. Um, it's not just about keto and low carb and high protein and this well what are those foods made out of what's the quality of the food that you're putting in because you are what you eat if you're just eating a bunch of burritos you're gonna look like a burrito (laughs) um yeah and then after after those things after your sleep your water your food now you need to ask yourself why (laughs) why am i gonna go move why am i gonna go sign up for this program for the next six weeks eight weeks and, and, and go through all this and because then ne- that's what you carry throughout the whole process and then movement like literally just moving I think uh, if you want to get the bare minimum and I can guarantee you're going to feel something yes the intensity matters but just go move for 30 minutes just 30 freaking minutes man just go move go walk go do anything you can for 30 minutes of movement your body your brain has no choice but to produce your body with the correct chemistry to give you the energy to do that. And you normally have it throughout the day after that. Mm-hmm. 
I definitely agree with you that like literally right before this, I had a class and I was using my back roller <laughs> just to, you know, <laughs> just take my mind off of things. And I think that's definitely something we've noticed in society is a lot of us have actually kind of become lazy and taken advantage of the pandemic. You know, we're eating more to just fill this void to, or just sitting down, binging, watching Netflix all day. Um, and yeah, it, it's not healthy. And, and one of my concerns, I think too, and that's kind of why I came out to you guys is I was kind of noticing that in myself um, and too, which is, uh, and I think a big issue in modern day society too, is which I'm curious to hear both your opinions is, is following through and not being structured or having a schedule or just, you know, being organized. Um, and I know Otto, you're a very organized person. And if that's kind of helped you get to where you are today to achieve some of your goals, and even we could kind of shift into that with fitness as well, too. Yeah, I think when it's on paper and, and you have a schedule, um, it takes the choice away. You don't have to sit there and think about like, oh, well, should I do this? Should I do that? Should I do this? Should I do that? And because you're going to favor what's, 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 easy and, and, and quick our, our brain and our body are conditioned to always seek the path of least resistance mm -hmm. absolutely when you mean yeah. by that is it like avoiding pain like conflict or even just challenges in general like we tend to move away from that because i know you had pointed that out the other day when when i was doing weights and i kind of was like my posture was kind of changing i think mean, just because i was becoming lazy or something <laughs> yeah 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 i think uh like all, all related to, to what we are consumed with now, because I feel like uh, the way that you perceive the world is with what you put inside. Um, right now we're, we're running um, and we're running these really stupid mileage. So um, I have a, a four day run coming up in April. Yes, it's four days, uh, running four days consecutively. I'm planning on putting somewhere around 200 miles um, not really sleeping and I'm, that's prepping myself for uh, the Moab 240. There's a 240 mile race out in, in, in Utah, the, the Moab desert uh, in October. So I kind of dragged this kid along and asked him to pace for me. Um, so he's kind of training right now as well. Mm -hmm. And we, go ahead. Oh yeah, no. And like I was gonna say, like in April as well, I'm gonna be doing a 60 mile run with Otto. Uh, not the four day run, just a 60 miler, but some way, somehow I'll sort of pace for him during that. And just like, yeah, just being on a schedule and stuff like that. Like, mm -hmm. as you can see right now, or during the recording of this podcast, it's raining outside. Yeah. There's storms <laughs> I just heard. And I'm scheduled today for 12 miles. Now, I don't have a choice to not do those 12 miles. I have to do them no matter what, whether it's rain, snow, day, night, I have, I don't have the option to opt out of doing that. It's already set in paper. Yeah. Once you put something on paper and it's there, then now you have to face you quitting and quitting in that little instant and moment is going to last forever. It's going to, it's going to seep in the next day, next week, next month. But if it's there and, 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 and you do it now, that's another little stepping stone to the next one. So with the mileage, it, it's all on paper, it's programmed. And, you know, the difference between a professional and amateur is that an amateur does things based off of how they feel. A uh, professional does um, acts on their values. They, they make more value-based decisions. Um, so yeah, we, we try to, to seek that out a little bit more. We, we value being able to accomplish some of these goals. And when we decide to go on the run or to not go on the run, it's not because we feel tired or because we feel this or that. It's we're, we're doing it because we have values that we're trying to express. And we're kind of like formed, oh, I was just going to say formed like healthier habits. That's what I meant to say is like, you know, th those little things, those kind of turned into bad habits for me and all of us. And how can we adjust those to, to making those be more positive? But Eddie, what, you were going to say something? No, I was just going to sort of like tag along with what you're saying. Like our mindset didn't just happen overnight. It was a thing that built on continually because if, for example, if you asked Eddie two years ago that he was going to run 60 miles, he'd tell you, what are you crazy? I'm not going to do that. But compared to me now, 
you tell me to run 12 miles now and be like, okay, um, is this going to help my run? You know, so on and so forth. It's the, the, the road to be able to go to that mindset. It's little victories here and there. It's not just something that happens overnight. You say yes to one thing. You say, okay, I can push a little bit harder today. Oh, I can do a little bit more today. Oh, oh, I feel like quitting, but you know what? I'm not going to quit this time. I'm going to keep on going. It's little steps like that that help see how far long you travel on the road. Yeah, no, I think, uh, and so then that's really important with what you choose to do. Uh, we try to follow, it's called the Goldilocks rule. Um, it's got to be just right. It's got to be just right for you. Don't look on Instagram and see all these people doing these crazy ass workouts and, you know, just eating kale and lettuce and, and this and that, because you don't really see cleanses. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, your body does a pretty effective job of, of cleansing itself <laughs> as long as you're it's well hydrated, it's 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 rested. So when you're, if you're gonna go out and you're gonna choose to start some kind of fitness program or a weight loss program or something, you don't need to know all your calories and all your macros and this or that or blah blah blah. Start with just something that not too easy and not too hard, but it's accomplishable. And you can accomplish, 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 accomplish. And then before you know it, you look back and you're like, oh shit, um, I got pretty far. <laughs> but it's it's baby steps. Everybody wants na everything now and fast and and quick. I mean, I can literally go on my phone and just order food and go Uber Eats. It's like, no, I'm, yeah. I'm going to go work for my food. I'm going to go hunt. <laughs> and then I can eat my prey, you know? Um, yeah, just stuff with the rise of social media and the rise of YouTube and all that. And like people are so accustomed to instant gratification, but you know, compared to times before the internet, technology and all that, we, like I said, we had to work in order to get our food. Nobody's really uh, experiencing delayed gratification, you know, gratification that'll come in the long term. It's just like, we want everything instant, instant now, but we also have to, to train ourselves to be like, okay, I'm not going to have this now, but it's going to come eventually. And that's where that delayed gratification comes in. And now it's crazy because especially with internet and us being at home, online shopping, it just takes like two clicks, as they say. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's it's yeah. unbelievable how that works now. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much for, for sharing that, you know, visual with us. Um, and that kind of... I think you kind of touched on this. We were talking about the little victories, pushing yourself a little bit more. And for me, that's kind of life changing. You're becoming more determined um, to accomplish your goals. And I kind of wanted to touch a bit more about how has physical training changed your life? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, when I say the whole running 240 miles, um, there's a lot of backstory that comes from that. Um, you know, the first time I ran a marathon was in 2005. It's 2021. And, you know, it just, it makes me, makes me ask myself like, well, shit, what, what is the limit? Like, what, what can I not do or do? You know, I, I've had a couple other overnight runs where they're 24 hours, um, you know, again like about two two years ago this kid was almost 400 pounds now he's weighing in at like 205 pretty solid and he's going for a 60 mile run um last year he did a marathon 25 miles before that we ended up doing these long runs up in the trails um before that he was running three miles around the neighborhood the first day it was a mile <laughs> so to go from 400 pounds and a mile to now 60 miles and 200 pounds, that was over a span of two years. None of this shit happened with a pill or any of that from, from one day to the next. Um, and then what happened is that you carry those things on throughout life. So I have a little daughter, she's two, she's extremely energetic. Um, you know, there's days we wake up early every day, we work in the morning, we work in the evening. So sometimes I catch myself saying like, damn, dude, I'm tired, man. Like, I don't know if I can, I can keep going. And I, I think back at, at running 24 hours, going through obstacles in and out of the water, the cold. And I'm like, shit, if I can do that, I can, I can do this for sure. Like I'm just going through my day and stuff. So 
um, your your body keeps the score. Um, a, a, anything that you do, your body does not forget what it is that you put through it. Um, so it just it helps in all areas of, of life, being able to accomplish these little goals and taking them into other facets of life. Yeah, what do you feel like the physical training has done for you and stuff? Well, <laughs> uh, let me state the obvious. It's pretty much just changed my life. Um, you know, as we said before in the beginning, I wasn't very too much of a confident person. I wouldn't even to this day, like not to this day, I mean, back then I wouldn't be able to look at even the eye. I would have my head down. I wouldn't be very vocal. I was very depressed and anxious back then too, but you know, through physical fitness and, you know, not just physical fitness, but also through nutrition, I was able to lose the weight, but also build up my confidence, you know, actually like, like myself and accept myself more. And I know that's really big right now, self-love and everything like that. But yeah, it's like, there have been times where, to be honest, like when I weighed 400 pounds that I hated myself, I hated my image, I hated my perception of myself, but, you know, through physical fitness, through others helping me out, it was, it changed my life. And it's, you know, it's given me self-love, self-confidence, and just like, like I said, it all starts with baby steps, baby steps, baby steps. And another one, like he was saying, how our body keeps the score. Another uh, thing we do is we do what we call a personal cookie jar. We get this from David Goggins where, you know, when we feel like we can't do anymore, we pull from that cookie jar like, wait, I ran a marathon. Oh, wait, I was able to do X, this, and Y, that. It's just like, I can definitely do this. And that's where, you know, our personal cookie jar comes in. And with that personal cookie jar, it never runs empty. We're always filling it, filling it up with more. And, you know, we just fill it up as much as we can. If you're sitting there listening to this or, or watching this and you're like, well, I, I don't have confidence, like good for you guys, but I'm not confident, man. Well, I think the first thing that you you seek out is, is actually courage. Confidence comes through repetition. Uh, the first thing you need to do is be courageous and, and, and just jump off that cliff and build the plane on the way down. Um, the confidence will come, but you first have to be man, courageous. Mm -hmm. So you've touched on so many points already and, and given lots of good insight for our listeners. And I just have one last question. Um, and is there any last, like any other advice you can give um, to those that I would say that don't have access to, for example, to like an at-home gym or equipment or even resources to help get them through these challenging times? Um, you know, because like a lot of our students, they're actually up in, in the city and they're in their tiny little apartments and they're very limited on what they can do. I mean, and then there's those like me who are at home with their families or, you know, they work full time as well. And so I'm um, just kind of curious from both your perspectives, um, if there's any other points that you would like to share. Yeah, let me see if I can paint this picture because it's something that I actually talked to you about earlier. Um, it's actually from a book called Convict Conditioning. Yes, a convict, <laughs> somebody that's in jail. And I know a lot of you feels like, like you're in jail <laughs> right now in your house or in your room and, <laughs> and it's prison. Well, a lot of those dudes that go to prison, they come out pretty jacked and, and, and they don't have all kinds of fancy equipment in there and, 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 and dumbbells and this and that. Yeah, they probably have a yard and they might go out there for, but they don't have sources that we have as far as nutrition and, and, and all that stuff, right? Um, your own body weight is mother nature's perfect amount of resistance for your cell. You need all the equipment. You don't need all these heavy weights and so on and so forth. There's a lot of ways that you can manipulate your own body weight to create muscle, to condition your heart, your, your, yourself, um, you know, honestly, just starting with learning correct movement patterns, there's so much stuff out there on Google, on YouTube, um, learning how to bend over the right way, learning how to breathe through your diaphragm, through your belly, um, learning how to squat, how to push, how to pull. Um, yeah, all those resources are out there. And then you can start constructing your own little program, push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups, squats, lunges, 
um, your gait, whether it's jumping, jumping rope, you might need a jump rope for that one. Yeah, um, sprinting. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of things that you can do. To be honest with you, I really don't mess around with too much equipment anymore. Obviously, I'm running, so I'm training to run. I don't, I'm not trying to carry a bunch of weights when I'm running. Um, and so, yeah, there's a lot of things that you can do with your own body weight you've been carried around you carried around for 24 hours a day <laughs> and then hopefully you sleep seven of those hours so yeah you're pretty used to carrying that around i love that Thank you so much for sharing that um i really love that visual um and i think our audience can really picture that in their minds and realize that there's so much we can do with our own bodies um, that kind of leads me to our next question. Um, just if you could briefly give us a like three books that you would like for our viewers to um, look up on their free time. I know too, Otto, you had kind of pointed out some different authors and, and quotes. Um, and if you want to even reshare those two, that would be awesome. You can start with comments. Okay. Yeah, well, first of all, let's start with our staple book that we quote on a daily basis. We listen to it almost religiously. Uh, can't Stop Me Now by David Goggins. Can't Hurt Me. Can't Hurt Me Now. I don't know why I messed that up. Can't, can't Hurt Me Now by David Goggins. Yeah, Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. Um, another book that deals with psychology and childhood trauma um, is The Body Keeps the Score. That is a phenomenal book. I normally do all my stuff on Audible, so I listen to all my books. Um, that's another great one. And the one that I just mentioned right now is called Convict Conditioning. Um, it, you can look that one up. It's actually a good book. And that one has programs in there from literally the very beginning of doing something, taking it to something really far and really cool. Um, you don't need any equipment to accomplish any of that stuff. It was, uh, they used to call him the El Profesor, I think, in, in prison, but he was like a professor and he kind of helped all the inmates get strong and, and so on and so forth. So, yeah, I know, especially right now, everybody can can feel like they are in jail and they can't go out and have a drink or go to a restaurant or this or that. Uh, take advantage of that time, man. Jail's in here. It's not out there. Yeah. Thank you both for sharing. And uh Something we just ask is um, for the last part is, can you give us a quick tour of um, the gym just to see like <laughs> and inspire others, like to see if they have any ways they can create their own gym as well? <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, for sure. I mean, this is kind of overkill, but this is, we, we're in the office right now. This is our, our little warm up room. We got a couple rollers. Mm -hmm couple rollers out there. Obviously, uh, it's a home gym, so we got to deal with some of this stuff. Oh, yeah, with <laughs> it raining right now. <laughs> yeah, but this is kind of more of the, the functional area. Now, we have a couple squat racks. Use those box here. jumps this morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got our boxes there. And then more of like kind of the strength section all, all up in here. Um, yeah, we're spoiled. We all get lockers. It's like we're going back to school. Um, yeah, this is kind of our little lounge area. I still have all the Christmas stuff I have to put away. And it all started in here with uh, the, the little boxing room. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and there's my kitchen. This is probably <laughs> the most important part, but and here, the magic you know, happens. yes, yes, in there, check that out. We've got a lot of colors and it's kind of empty. <laughs> There's not too, too much stuff, but yeah, that's, I mean, it's legit, the home gym. So I just went around the whole back of the house and yeah. Thank you for doing that. Um, sure. Sure, very beautiful. Sure. I love how it looks very big. Like, it's hard to think it's a home. Like, it looks like a whole gym to me, really. Better than celebrities. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. I think, uh, was it 2006 to 2021? So it's it's taken a long time. Yeah. Um, things don't happen overnight. Um, they start just little by little by little. Yeah. So just start now. 
start now. Don't don't wait until quarantine's over. Don't wait until you can go back to your classroom. Don't don't wait. Start now. Because you always think you have another day, but in actuality, you only have today. All right. I love that. Thank you so much both for coming on and giving us your experience with fitness and everything, the knowledge that you've acquired through your journey. I mean, all of this is very valuable, especially, you know, to our viewers, to myself, even I'm also, you know, pursuing my journey with fitness. So it's really nice to hear um, your perspective since you've been at it for, for a while. So it's, re it's really valuable. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you both again. And I will continue to see you throughout the semester and, and would love to even bring you on again at some point throughout um, and maybe talk about another or just go more in depth with a certain topic like nutrition or just another week about mental health. So it really means a lot to us and our listeners too. So now we're just gonna jump into some quick announcements for the university. Um, the first one is student leadership and engagement's largest annual event is going virtual again. Get ready for the spring involvement e-fair. Sign up and log on to discover involvement opportunities with 100 plus student organizations. Create a schedule that works for you from February 9th to February 11th between 4 to 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. There will be something there for everyone. Um, another thing too is I will post the links for these announcements um, below our captions. And our second one, which Eddie, you might be interested in too, um, it's the WCC Collegiate Esports Invitational. So any student from a West Coast Conference member school is eligible to compete. The West Coast Conference champion team will receive a thousand dollars cash prize and will be eligible to compete against the top performing teams from seven other NCAA conferences from across the country for an additional five grand cash prize. Um, there is no fee to enter. They simply just need to enter as teams of three and register with your school email address specifically. And again, I will post that link below and it's like a gaming tournament apparently. So um, one last thing I ask for both Audi, Otto and Eddie is, can you please share with us your, um, your socials or anything? I, I, we would love to, to see and we'll definitely post that in our captions as well. Yeah, you can definitely follow us at stimulus underscore TFM. Yeah, that's our IG and that's pretty much all we have right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. it's all word of mouth. <laughs> <laughs> um, and again, to, um, to all our listeners, um, to keep up with our weekly podcasts, we'll be posting this on YouTube. We also have our Audible series on Anchor and um, our socials are at USF SLE. So make sure to check us out. And Macy, would you like to take it away with an inspirational quote? Yeah, so we do like to end every podcast with an inspirational quote. And the quote that we have for today is, it is so important to take time for yourself and find clarity. The most important relationship is the one you have with yourself. And this is coming from Diane von Furstenberg. Yeah, and I think that speaks true to everything we talked about in this podcast. It all starts with you. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you all. And this has been Activity Time. Woo thank you. <laughs> thank you very much.